Good afternoon, everyone. This is Joe Bacella here at Chaken Analytics, and I'd like to welcome you to our presentation of Create High Probability Option Strategies by Predicting Where a Stock is Headed. Presenting today is Sandy Chaken, co-founder of Chaken Analytics, along with Josh Midland, head of option strategies at Chaken Analytics. Now, before we get started, please note that Chaken Analytics is not a registered broker dealer or investment advisor, either with the United States Securities and Exchange Commission or with any state securities regulatory authority. Chicken Analytics is for educational purposes only and is not a trade advisory service. Past results of any trading system or methodology do not guarantee future results. Now throughout this presentation, please submit your questions using the Zoom Q&A window, which you can access in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. We will be available throughout the presentation to answer your questions. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and a copy will be sent to everyone who is registered. Now, with no prior experience, Sandy started. Uh, Sandy Chaikin started investing in 2012 with Chaikin Analytics and built a killer portfolio that outperforms the S&P 500 and most money managers. Sandy presents at NASDAQ and industry conferences on fearless investing. Josh Midland has spent a decade developing and teaching option strategies to traders of all skill levels. Josh currently hosts a three-part series at Chaikin Analytics so, uh, for Chaikin Analytics subscribers involving option strategies that range from simple buying of calls and puts to all the way through spreads and complex strategies. To get us started today, here's Sandy Chaikin. Joe, thanks so much. And um, Josh and I are really uh, thrilled to be presenting together once again. Uh, Josh being our options expert, as you explained, and me being the one that can identify how to find winning stocks and know the direction a stock is headed. So um, when we get started, I always like to start with kind of framing the conversation around what's the problem facing most individual investors. And the problem for most investors is that uh, they've underperformed. The S&P has grown an average of almost 10% a year over the past 20 years, yet individuals have only averaged 5% gain each year. And the reason being because people buy on emotion, not fact. So what, what Josh and I aim to do today is to counter that with giving you some uh, firmly set, well, rules, if you will, and it sounds like school children, but these are basically our guidelines for how we trade and how we invest. And uh, we want to share those with you so that you'll take the emotion out of your investing and trading and be able to be more profitable. So our promise is we're going to show you how to create high probability option strategies and how to predict where a stock is headed, which is at the foundation of any option strategy. So this is the type of uh, stock we're going to be uh, explaining to you. This is a chart from Chaikin Analytics, our, our platform, and it shows D.H. Horton, you know, from the time I bought it at this uh, yellow arrow here back in August with this buy signal, which is the little triangle, all the way up to when I sold it uh, today when it spiked up here having report earnings. So by the end of this presentation, your eye is going to be very familiar with this type of a chart. And when we put a chart up, uh, you will be able in a matter of seconds to identify whether this is a stock you want to know more about or whether you want to just, just pass on it. So all of this trading and investing is for what purpose? Well, it's obviously to make more money in the, in the stock market. It's the one thing uh, it was the one topic as a child uh, I was taught you just don't you just don't discuss money in polite society women were just not uh, taught to discuss money so it's been kind of a turnaround for me um, since I Mark and I started this company in 2009 because uh, really the only purpose in investing in the stock market is to make money so now I'm really fine with that. I'm great with it, as a matter of fact, and I really enjoy making the money that I do. But uh, we put away a number, a lot of my um, profits stay in my 401k plan, but we also have some, uh, take some wins out, some of those profits out and celebrate by taking some really great vacations. So uh, where would you like to spend your money? You know, you're going to be making some of these profits as well. You know, think about where you want to spend that. 
So why should you be listening to me? Well, as Joe said, I have beaten the S&P 500 since I started investing with Chaikin in, in 2012. And since the research shows that the majority of, of pros underperform the S&P 500, then by correlation, I'm also beating four out of every, every five pro. Uh, when I started in 2012, I was buying stocks that I knew of, like eBay, Yahoo, Southwest Air, Skyworks. And then I got into uh, last year finding these um, small cap stocks that were just exploding with these uh, triple digit gains, Senta up to 127%, Quad, quad Graphics 189%, NACO up 114%. And I bet none of you have ever heard of those names, nor had I, but that's okay. You know, there's money to be made on these, I call them these little known uh, w uh, winners. Um, if you know how to find them. So uh, I'm going to take you through the methodology of how I find stocks like these. This year I'm in stocks like DHI. Actually, I just sold that today. I've been, I am in LAM Research. I've been in and out of that. I'm back in it. And Bruker, I just sold Bruker as well. So these stocks, again, have, have double-digit gains in a market that has had a good year. Uh, S&P's up 15%, that's not bad, but if you want to do better than the market, um, then you need to know uh, these secrets that, that Josh and I will be sharing with you. So Josh, um, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure, thank you, Sandy. Hello, everybody. Uh, excited to be here with you today. My name is Josh. I'm the head of option strategies here at Chaikin Analytics. I've been blessed to be coached and mentored by by uh, some very uh, impressive people, people just like Mark, and I have the uh, opportunity to work with Mark, which is fantastic. And my job here at Shaking Analytics is to help people that are interested in trading options leverage the power of Shaking Analytics to find them high probability, good risk reward, low risk strategies. And so that's, that's what I do here. I love doing it, and I'm very excited to show you the process that we uh, go through tonight with Sandy. Terrific. Thank you, Josh. That's great. Okay, so I'm going to start with asking you all a question. Uh, what are the challenges so many of you are facing today? What what is the what is the thing that holds you back from pulling the trigger when you're considering buying or selling a stock? Uh, Joe's just put up a little poll, and if you don't mind, just populating it with Joe do you want them to put one one choice in actually to, today I went back to the uh, multiple choice format um, okay so you're welcome to select any of these as many of these uh, as you feel resonate with the challenges you experience in the market great okay let's give you a minute or so to just populate that if you would mm -hmm. it helps Josh and I know where you're coming from so we can address your concerns and we'll give that about just 10 more seconds. It looks like about half of you already responded, so thank you very much for that. Great. Yeah, this is all about you guys. So the more you participate, uh, the more you'll get out of it. I got to say, I noticed, uh, and I'm, I'm sure because Joe, my colleague in client success, we see, uh, we work with people on a bunch of these all the time, regularly. Joe and I help people with these. These challenges. Absolutely. I mean, it's our job. Joe does a great job at it. I, you know, not to tell my own horn, but I think I do pretty well. <laughs> I'm sure. Yes, you both do great. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Let's take a look at the results. Okay. What um, do we have there, Joe? I'm going to share. And it looks like a lot of the familiar suspects. Timing. Timing. Fear of loss and risk. Uncertainty in the market. Those seem to be the ones that stand out. Fear. Information overload is down there. Mm-hmm just as high as fear, uncertainty in the market. Okay. Poor stock selection, lack of reliable tools kind of comes up, uh, runnering up. Okay, that's great. Joe, thanks, and thank you all for participating. That's really helpful. Um, so timing, that's the one you all mentioned was your biggest challenge and followed up by fear of loss or risk, which of course is tied into letting emotions get in the way, 
and you know information overload. How do you know what to believe in this age of distraction, I call it? Uh, we have already baked those replies into this presentation because I ask this very same question every time I give a presentation and I get very similar answers each, each time. So we've already uh, anticipated your replies and are addressing it so that by the end of this hour, um, you, should be, you should have the answers of how you can overcome those objections and challenges. So here's what we're gonna be talking about today, four steps to invest profitably. Obviously, you have to start with tools you trust. Uh, if you can't depend on what you're basing decisions on, it, it, you're gonna, you're, you're screwed. You, so you gotta have good, uh, reliable tools that are not only reliable, but easy to use. You need to know where a stock is headed. And for Josh's options strategies, this is relevant for him as well. You know, as well as my swing trading, I'm a swing trader. So I buy and sell and I need to know where that stock is headed before I buy it and uh, before I sell it. And the when, you know, that's your biggest challenge. When, that's the big question that uh, Joe and Josh say they get when they're talking to our subscribers. That's always, you know, a challenge. And then Josh is gonna show you how to create high probability option strategies. So Josh, I'm gonna turn this over to you to get started with the first order of business, which is trust uh, proven tools. Absolutely. Uh, the Chaken Power Gauge is a proven tool. It's back tested. We have results. We'll get to that in a little bit. First, I just want to briefly uh, go over how how we even got to the Chaken Power Gauge. How did this even come about? I was uh, I've heard the story many a time, but uh, I was talking a little bit with Sandy today. Mark was in retirement, and uh, he had sold his business to a division of Reuters. Uh, he was happily retired, and 2009 came around. And Mark saw a lot of individuals getting really hurt and they didn't have a reliable place to turn. And so what Mark did, having spent five decades on Wall Street, he, he took the, his life's experience and the culmination of his life's work is this power gauge rating. And it is, it is, uh, it is awesome. In fact, someone called it an awesome meter. We'll get to that. Uh, but it is a very powerful algorithm that helps people understand what is likely to outperform or underperform the market, which is so, so critical. Uh, so let's uh, go to the next. Yeah. So there's, there's a lot in this power gauge rating. There's, there's a ton. We we're an analytics firm at our heart. We crunch a lot of numbers. So there's a whole lot going on underneath the surface. One of the beauties of it though, is that you know, you get a very digestible, easy to understand way to use it. Uh, one of the things that it does is it helps you eliminate a lot of the noise that's out there. Uh, it helps you cut through the clutter. A great way to say that. It helps you cut through the clutter. Uh, one of the things that was on that uh, question that we had up was information overload and uh, having confidence now, those two things tend to go together. You're unsure of the information you're using. Uh, it leads to not being confident in your decisions. This was an interesting stat that we came across. There's been more information created in the last decade than in the entirety of human history. That's amazing to think about. It's amazing. And, it's, and to be honest, we've all put it on uh, one click of the mouse away. You go to Google and, and you have not only the past 10 years, but you have just about all of human history available to you. It's overwhelming. So the power gauge rating gives you a simple way to understand and use it so you know whether something is likely to outperform or underperform. Now, I say it's simple, but it's not simplistic. Um, a lot of people pour over numbers and uh, do a lot of fundamental research. The power gauge rating is 85% fundamentals. It, Mark took what Wall Street looks at basically, and he put it into a, uh, an algorithm, a, a model, a model that crunches all this data so that you don't have to go through that rigmarole 
honestly, and the headache of trying to determine whether this PE is a good PE. I, you know, I've coached tons of fundamental value investors, and and I know what I know what they're looking at, and this helps simplify what is not a simplistic thing, uh, and it's wonderful. Now, as I mentioned, there are uh, twenty factors in this model. Oh. Here we go. I'm sorry. Before we get to the 20 factors, John Carter, some of you may be familiar with John Carter. He has hundreds of thousands of followers, widely followed, very, very highly regarded trader. And he calls it an awesome meter. It's an objective awesome meter for stocks is what uh, John calls it. And I couldn't agree with John more on that. It is an objective awesome meter. It uh, will We'll talk a little more about the objectiveness in it in a minute, but let's get to the factors that go into this model. So there are 20 factors. As I said, uh, it's 85% fundamentally based, 15% based on technicals. And we've highlighted a couple of these. You'll see there are some highlighted in red. Those are factors that Sandy likes to use in uh, some of her screens and some of her evaluations. There are some highlighted in blue. In fact, you'll see there's one in red and blue. Sandy and I both like to use that one. It's the earning surprise factor. It helps out a lot during earning season. We'll talk more about that when we get to some of our examples. But you can see these are the 20 factors that go into the model. Uh, and every day, every day, we crunch the numbers on these uh, through our algorithm through our quantitative model and outcomes, whether it's likely to outperform, perform, or underperform. Now, one of the things uh, that gets in the way, and I'll be very brutally honest with everybody tonight, when Joe put up that, I checked one box on there. And the one box I checked is I'm human, and sometimes I let my emotions get in the way. Even as long as I've been doing this, I'm still human. I'm fallible, right? So the beauty of a model is it is not human. It is absolutely not human. It does the exact same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again without any emotion, which means it's objective. It's absolutely objective. The numbers go in, the result comes out, and there's no emotion that, that muddies it up in the way. And what we get on the other side is a very powerful uh, rating system. Now, how powerful is it? Well, uh, we partnered with NASDAQ. NASDAQ has some indexes. They have a large cap, a small cap, and a dividend index. And we partnered with them, and we overlaid the power gauge rating system onto the already existing NASDAQ indices and created NASDAQ shaken indexes. I've circled hours, they're in the middle column. You can see on the right hand side how much better those indices were when you just applied the power gauge rating to them. Some of these by 2000 basis points. That's, that's incredible, that's incredible. So what has this done? Well, uh, it's attracted some other uh, large institutions and uh, people with interest in partnering with us. One of them is New York Life's Mainstay Investment Division. And what New York Life did was they licensed those Chaikin NASDAQ indices and they've built an ETF around it. Now, uh, this is, I want to be clear, nothing uh, is advice uh, to go buy the ETF, uh, but we're very proud of it of 107 small cap ETFs that launched this year, ours is number one. Number one, with almost $300 million in assets under management already, already in it. It's, it's amazing, uh, we're very proud of it, it's very successful, uh, and it's proof. It's, it's real life proof of the power gauge rating. So, uh, we get quoted by the the media. In fact, you may have seen uh, Mark on CNBC. He's, he's on there regularly, uh, but we've been in other media as well. We had a couple articles in the street recently, uh, so you may have seen us in the media as well. In fact, uh, along with the street, Mark was the keynote speaker at a, um, a conference this past weekend. Sandy, why don't you uh, talk a little bit about uh, what happened in New York? Sure. Um, Mark was invited by Jim Cramer to be the keynote speaker at his uh, investor symposium uh, two Saturdays ago in New York City. So uh, 
Mark was there speaking. He was the only one that had a dedicated speaking slot. And during his presentation, Jim Cramer tweeted this out among, among other tweets that he sent, but he said, Jake and analytics model is the best used it at my old hedge fund. So you have um, the pros like Jim, you know, using it as well. And I know Joe, uh, Jim also uses money flow. You'll see him frequently put up the money flow chart, which is the original indicator Mark created some 35 years ago uh, on his, on his street.com platform and presentations. Okay, Josh, thank you. That's a great, that's a great run through of the power gauge rating. Uh, so you can sign up now, uh, no obligation. This is free. But if you go to shakeitanalytics.com slash mypowerfeed, you can sign up to get this. We call it Market in a Minute. And every morning, Monday through Friday, you'll get uh, delivered via email before the market opens a simple report that looks like what you see on the left. So it's a great way to get um, acclimated with the power gauge rating and to see what's happening kind of very top line in the markets. And it also, as you, as you scroll down on it, it will give you specific stock ideas, winners and losers. So I encourage you to sign up for that if you want to just uh, get a little bonus. Okay, so uh, our second um, heading of what we're going to be teaching here is how do you know where a stock is headed? Um, we have certain criteria that are out, is outlined right here, and this rolls it up into something we call a classic bull. So in order for us to be interested in a stock uh, that we feel has a strong potential to outperform the market, we want to see these all of these four uh, trends taking place. So uh, we'll go through that on some of the stock charts that follow, but before I get to that, I wanted to show you this uh, Wyckoff pattern, which was created by Dr. Wyckoff about 95 years ago. He, was, he taught how to uh, invest in the stock market. And it still is true today, but this is the way um, he charted the price um, of a bullish stock. So as we know, the stock doesn't go up or down in a straight line, but it does what I call a lot of zigging and zagging. So you can see here, you know, it's up and down and up and down, and then it pops up, it comes back a little bit, pops up again, goes sideways. So understanding this uh, pattern uh, and building that into your evaluation of a stock will really help you with knowing when to buy and sell it, which, which you all said was your biggest concern. Because you want to buy a stock when it's in one of these pullbacks, or zigging down by my nomenclature. And if you're going to sell a stock, you want to wait for it until it pops up and sell it up here. You know, you don't want to wait and sell it down here. And a stock will inevitably follow this pattern. It can't go up forever. It can't go down forever. So knowing to wait for those pauses um, can really help you. Uh, so let's apply that to a real life scenario right now on D.H. Horton. This is a stock uh, it's almost at 46 today. This is its, uh, it's, it's 52 week high. And let's just kind of break this chart down. Okay. So DH Horton has a very bullish power gauge. You can see up here and the bottom ribbon of the chart shows the historical rating that the power gauge has been for the last year. You can also switch to a five-year view. This gives you the one-year view. So we can see almost fully since February, this stock has been a bullish rating. In other words, our 20-factor our model says this stock is likely to outperform the market in the next three to six months. So check that off for a classic bull. The other, uh, one of the other criteria was that it had to have a strong relative strength. This, this heat map here, relative strength versus SPY measures how strong this stock is relative to the S&P 500. And most invent investors uh, measure themselves, including myself, against the, the SPY, the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is up 15% this year. As I mentioned, it's up an average of 10% a year. That holds for the last 20, as well as even further back number of years. Um, and that's okay. If you want to just get those average returns, 
you're better off putting your money into an S&P 500 index account and not worrying about it. If you want to outperform, if you want to find those single and triple digit winners like Senta, Lam Research, DHI, for instance, you know, then this is this is the methodology you want to pattern yourself after. This stock is up 67% year to date. I mean, who wouldn't want to have that, right? I'll come back to overbought, oversold uh, shortly, but this next big mountains of green is money flow. Now, this is the indicator that Mark created some 35 years ago when he was creating uh, tools for Wall Street pros. And what this does is it measures the institutional money coming in and out of a stock. And why is that important? Well, it's very important because part of a pr big part of a price move is based on supply and demand. So if there are a lot of institutions buying, as there are, you can see these big chunks, September, October, it, it escalates the price because there's, there's less of it to go around. And like anything, if it's rarer, it's more expensive. You know, likewise, when money is coming out, and I can't show you that on this example because my one day one day price chart is covering it up, but it when money's coming up it, out, it tends to either go sideways or down. So watching money flow is is really critical. And you can see how that is reflected in this price. You can see once everything kind of lines up here, you know, around July, when you get strong money flow, strong relative strength and a strong power gauge rating, the price just takes off. Um, we have six pairs of buy and sell signals. Those are these little green and red triangles I'll be uh, pointing out as well, Josh, along the way on our charts. And these are really helpful to say, hey, you might want to consider buying this stock right now. So back in August, I got this alert saying, hey, there's a lot of uh, professional money going into this stock. Uh, I had it on my watch list. I keep two lists, one of stocks I buy, one of stocks I'm watching. And I saw this signal on the watch list. And so I bought, I bought the stock back here at 36 on this money flow buy signal. And I kept it until um, today. You can see up here, they reported today in the morning before the open. And this is the one day chart, which is really helpful when you're buying or selling a stock that day. So, you know, I watched it go up a little bit. I sold it right around uh, here when it was uh, up 2%. Uh, I thought it was going to spike more, but it didn't. I think the stock is so, but so, so overbought as it is. I mean, you can see it's like, <laughs> it's had a huge run, right? Uh, it's had actually a 29% run since I bought it in August. So, uh, there's not a whole lot of gas left in the tank to push it up any further. So I thought I'm going to take my profit here, which is the arrow here, which I did. And I sold it at, uh, at over 45 today. Actually, I think I sold it at 46. Yeah, it popped up to 46. When I took this chart, it was a little bit later after I had bought it. Um, so I sold it at practically its all time high. And that tends to happen on earnings. Uh, when you see these little earnings, markers here every quarter. Um, watch the pattern. And Josh and I would be pointing these patterns out because these are really a tell for how you can expect the stock to react on the next earnings report. So some stocks have huge spikes, as you'll see with the next example. Some don't. This one doesn't. So when it went up 2% this morning, I said, oh, okay, I'll take the 2%. You know, for this stock, that's that's what I can expect on an earnings beat. Um, Cigna, let's look at another classic bull. This stock I've held since last November. This yellow arrow is back here. Uh, when I bought this stock at, um, let's see, it was 138. Again, on this buy signal. This happened to be an oversold buy signal. So let me explain that. Now, this is the overbought, oversold indicator right in here. And what this does is it mirrors the Wyckoff pattern. It charts the zigging and zagging of a stock. And when it's in what's called an oversold position, it's dipping down. See, it's dipping down before this 30 marker. Uh, that's when you want to buy it. 
and if the criteria line up correctly for the uh, what's in the system for the algorithm for an overbought um, buy signal, it will trigger this little arrow. So I already know it's dipping down. Uh, when it's dipping up like this, if you're going to sell it, that's when you want to sell it. And look how that correlates with this price up here. So you don't want to buy it up here. Or, or beforehand, you don't want to buy it up here. You want to wait for it to pull back. And it some, sometimes pulls back in a matter of days or, or a week. Um, but see, here's this little pullback here that correlates to this dip here. And then you can see it goes up. So understanding that this is going to happen and watching this overbought, oversold will really help you with timing. So I bought this stock here at 138 with that with that um, buy signal and it's up it's up to um, what is it 194 today so um, you know that's that's a pretty actually it's up even further I'm you know what I didn't update this chart yeah it's up to 200 is uh, it's up to 200 today this chart ends at the end of October but in the last week it's it's gone up to 200. Um, yeah, I knew something was missing here. So, but this is, I mean, as your eye getting used to this now, you're starting to see the pattern. You see all this green, really strong power gauge rating, really strong money flow, decent, really strong relative strength, excuse me, decent money flow, particularly recently. And it is normal for a, a stock to have these small um, changes over to red money flow. That's not a panic unless other things start to change as well. So here's another uh, classic bull. Uh, this is a stock that I bought back here on this yellow arrow, and again, on a buy signal, and again, on an overbought, over, overbought uh, I'm sorry, over, oversold buy signal. And you can see it correlates to this big dip down here. And so this was again on my watch list. And I just wait for the right opportunities to buy stocks. I hold them on my watch list. Ideally, when it, I get a signal, you know, that's usually the time I will buy it or certainly uh, evaluate buying it. And I sold it up here on this spike. Now, look at the pattern here after they report earnings. Green means they beat. Um, neutral means they met. Green means they beat. And look at how this spikes. I mean, this is a big spike. It went from like, what, 27 to 30-ish. You know, about a 10% spike on earnings, but look, it drops right back, right? Same thing previous quarter, it spiked up about 10% and pulled right back the next day. Here it beat, it went down. They must've had poor guidance. Um, but again, it kind of corrected itself. So. That's the way this stock, for whatever reason, and I don't need to know the reason, I just have to know from looking at the chart, that's the way it reacts. So when it reported earnings, um, just recently, it reported last week on, well, here's the, yeah, here it is, November 2nd. It reported November 2nd. It beat, it spiked up, and I didn't hesitate to sell it. So I'm incorporating some of the sell rules in with my explanations here so that we're all kind of crossing over on these sections. But by the end of the day, um, you'll understand the patterns here and what led me to make the decision to buy and what led me to make the decision to sell. So you can see on Bruker here um, that the money flow started to, to wane just in the last couple of days. So that even confirms that I was smart to take that uh, action and sell it on that spike. Now, if I, if I wasn't totally convinced uh, that this stock was going to spike up on an earnings um, play, I'd go to the five-year view. So this is showing me five years of earnings, green meaning they beat, red meaning they disappointed and the shaded area is, is they just met analyst ex expectations. Um, it took me a while to learn that uh, it's all about what the analyst expectations are. Um, and if they're met um, or exceeded, the, 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 ten the st stock tends to spike. If they disappoint, the stock 
tends to drop. So it has nothing to do with beating or comparing yourself to last year's earnings. That's irrelevant. The only thing that seems to matter to Wall Street is what are the analysts estimating and did this stock beat or miss? And that's what I can see on this chart is they been beating it pretty much since a year and a half ago um, and spiking up. Again, look at those patterns. So when I got this spike, when they reported on the third, I got out of there immediately. No hesitation. That's taking the emotion out. That's using the rules. You know, sell on spike. Take your profit because look what happens. It inevitably pulls back. Okay, so Josh, uh, maybe you can um, share with us some of your options, um, strategies on bullish stocks like Lamb Research. Absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, you know, what Sandy just shared with everybody is a repeatable process to outperform the market and have confidence in when you get in and out. And that's exactly what I uh, preach with, with my options. And what I do with options is, again, it is a repeatable process that's disciplined, takes the emotions out of it, it's rule-based. Uh, and it's very similar to what Sandy does. So uh, first, just a, a couple quick things. I'm just gonna review what Sandy talked about on the charts. You'll see that, now we showed this, uh, Sandy and I did a similar presentation back in June and we use this as an example. And you'll see I have uh, the yellow arrow there pointing to a buy signal that came up. It's an oversold buy signal that appeared back in the middle of June. And so what I did was uh, I pulled up our options play widget, which you can see there's a button up here. I circled it in yellow. Uh, and it pulls up this screen that you see, the options play screen. The options play screen is, it's a great tool. I use it as an advanced options trader. I use it. I think it's also great for beginners. One of the things it does is it shows you some easy and as options get simple strategies that you can use leveraging what you're seeing on checking analytics and turn it into an option strategy. You can see there's a scores. Uh, those are options play scores. They generally measure your risk, reward, and probability of success. And the one all the way on the right, what's known as a uh, bullish vertical trade, had a score of 100, which is a good score. It means it has good risk versus the reward and good odds of success. You can see just below the 100 score, is the expected return if we got the move that we wanted to make. If the stock got up to about 160, right, which it did, that was the amount of money that an option trader could expect to make on that trade. Now, sure enough, when we were oversold and on a dip, as you can see, the signal came up when we were oversold and on a dip, and it went down a little more. But when we went back up to overbought, we got up to these, uh, th we have volatility bands. There are three dotted lines you see going across the, uh, the price chart, and they're designed to show us the expected range for a stock. It's how we could expect here to understand that 160 is a reasonable point. That's where the upper band was. And that's where we can expect this to get to. Sure enough, it got there and you exit the trade. And at the same time, it got to the upper band. If you just look straight down, we were also overbought, showing us that we zigged down and then we zagged up. Uh, and again, it, it makes it so you have a simple uh, and repeatable way to get in and a simple and repeatable way to get out. Josh, the options play kind of maps that all out for you, doesn't it? And does the calculations that you used to do on spreadsheets. And oh, yeah, uh, yeah, right? absolutely, absolutely. So I used to have to write down what my risk is, what my expected reward is, calculate my break-evens, what are my odds of success is. A lot of math that I would have to do on a tablet or on pen to paper, sort of uh, old-fashioned, the way the kids say these days, old-fashioned pen and paper. <laughs> and, and now I don't have to do 
any of that. In fact, it's all in this options play widget. You don't, you can't see it from the particular shot that I took of it, but all that information is in there. The Greeks are in there. So if you're interested in wanting to know the delta of that vertical trade, I know I'm getting a little in the weeds here, um, but you know what? It's the beauty of that options play tool is that it is valuable to both the individual who has never traded an option and wants to have a, um, there's no, there's nothing that has no risk, but let's say a, uh, a less risky and more safer way to get involved and, and into options world. And it also has features in it that are great for people that are doing uh, back ratios or calendar spreads or butterflies or any other the crazy names that I could throw out there. It, it's great for that entire spectrum and it saves me a lot of time. And time is more valuable than money, if I may say so. Money comes and goes. Time only goes. Time's our, our biggest commodity. I don't know of anyone who has enough time <laughs> today. Nope. But Josh also teaches these, all of these types of strategies to our subscribers. What, three times a week, Josh? Oh, so Joe and I split duties. Uh, my colleague Joe and I hold three option sessions a week for our subscribers. Uh, we have sessions that are revolving around finding option ideas. How do I find myself the next lamb research? We do a session on that every week. In fact, we do two of them on just that. And if you're thinking, well, I don't really know options. I'd like to get into them. I happen to teach a class on it. I teach a beginner's class. And if you're somebody who wants to tweak their front ratio spread uh, strategy, I, I teach an advanced class too and everything in between. Awesome. Great. So here's one of your happy subscribers. It is, Mark. <laughs> uh, and uh, these, as he says in it, all very simple trades, making the process fast and efficient. It's, it's repeatable. What's repeatable is more efficient, right? That's how Ford was able to make all, all those cars and revolutionize the way we do things. It was able to take a process uh, that was not efficient and make it efficient and then make it more valuable. Uh, and, and options play and shaking analytics do just that. And so uh, this, is, this is one of our many happy, happy subscribers. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. So I know Joe and Josh get asked all the time, well, how do you find these stocks? And we're going to show you multiple ways that we, we find them. One is Mark puts out a market commentary to our subscribers every Sunday night. And in it, he always includes some individual stock recommendations and highlights one in, in particular, which he calls the stock of the week. So this is the one that he, Mark, the stock market expert, goes into great depth explaining. And you can see he wrote about DR Horton back here on September 25th. Now, I had already bought this stock uh, five weeks earlier, but had I not, you know, I usually put his um, ideas onto my watch list and then buy them at the opportune time or consider buying them at the, I don't buy all of them. But certainly this is one great way to get leads from, you know, the market expert himself. Uh, the other way is what we call the discovery engine. This is something we've come out recently with. And what this does is you can seed this engine with any stock. I seeded it here with Cigna. And then it will show you stocks like Cigna. Think of it as like a Pandora or a Spotify that you see with a particular mu music artist or, or song and it'll find other music like that one. This is the same idea. So uh, I'm showing you a screen that I did back in September 14th. So that was what, about um, six weeks ago for Cigna. And Kemper, um, you know, I, you can click on each of these charts. You can put them into a list. And so what I did was I looked at uh, Kemper. Uh, here's the chart from Kemper that I had back on September 14th. And so it was up here at close to, was it about close to 50, I guess. And you can see that it had this recent uh, relative strength buy signal here saying this, this stock is starting to outperform the S&P 500. So all that was pretty good information, right? Um, what did I do with it? Well, here's where it is today. I didn't buy this stock, by the way, but 
I took this screenshot today of where this has gone. <laughs> and the yellow arrow is where it was on September 14th. And now six, eight weeks later, you know, it's up at 65. So it's up, what, 32% in the eight weeks. So this is a great way to find stock ideas. You know, who wouldn't want to be up 35% in a number of weeks, right? So let's look at a current stock discovery engine. So I took the same seed, Cigna, and this is what I got today. So I scrolled through and I liked uh, M MTG. And here is the MTG chart as of today. And you can see here it's triggered an oversold buy signal. So um, maybe let's put up, uh, Joe, our, uh, our um, poll question to see if you all think this is a stock. Now you've seen a couple of charts. Is this a stock you think you would buy now or you would wait? And apologize for the, uh, the, the typo there. I have MGIC, I must have misread that. No, uh, that was my mistake. Oh, you... oh, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so MG... apologize MTG. for my mistake. No, yeah. no, no. MTG, what would, you, what would you do with the stock based on the chart that you see there now? And we'll see, I've got about a good chunk of you already responded again, thank you. And we'll give it about five more seconds. I got MGIC my answer. MGIC is, is actually yeah. the name. Josh, did you respond? I did, I got my answer. <laughs> <laughs> good. All right, let's, uh, let's cool. take a look here. And kind of split, but the edge is more toward buy. Okay, okay, interesting. All right, so Josh, what did you put down? I put it down by it now. Okay. I like where it is. Uh, in fact, one of the things after we were talking today uh, is I went and I went to go pull up the options, although time in a day is tough. So I didn't actually pull the trigger yet, but we're going to check it again on the open tomorrow. Okay. All right. Um, what I would do is just hold on, put this in my watch list and watch it until money flow turns red. I mean, turns green. So this little, teeny tick to uh, red uh, is not my ideal setup. You know, I want money flow to be strong. Although it's had a really nice pullback, but I want to make sure that it's not going to hold a pullback, that it's going to continue to go up. And you can see what happens when money flow does turn red. I mean, even when power gauge and relative strength are, are good, when, when money flow turns red, it tends to go sideways. So that's what would give me hesitation to buy this now until, uh, until this flips back to green. But that's a good stock to watch. Okay, so that's, that's one of the ways we find uh, winning stocks. And it actually got us an award. That Discovery Engine was the basis for Benziga giving us the award in May for the best stock idea platform. And there were like 17 other players kind of vying for that award and they gave it to Chaikin because of what we're showing you here, the discovery engine being part of it. The screener is also uh, part of why we won that award um, because this is another way to find great stock ideas. And this is what we call our screener. And it's kind of um, basic looking, right? But it's very cool because you can plug in stocks that meet your criteria. So for me, I would always choose the strongest industry groups because even average stocks in strong industry groups tend to outperform the strongest stocks in weak industry groups. So in other words, you want to go with industries like aerospace right now or insurance or the major banks that have been strong. Um, go with the strongest industry groups and that'll put more of the chips in your favor. I always want to follow that classic bull pattern, a bullish power gauge rating, strong money flow, and strong relative strength. And as Josh pointed out when he was going through the 20 factors of, of the power gauge rating, you know, these are the factors I like uh, to be strong price to sales. Um, and oh, well, this was actually during earnings. So I changed these a little bit from my normal factors to ones around earnings. Um, because we're in earnings season. 
but you can flip them any way you want and change them. Now, I did this a couple of weeks ago, and you can see here, um, and this chart was from two weeks ago when I did a webinar, and you can see, and we were right in the midst of, of earnings season. You can see it says, hey, there's a buy signal on HII. So let's take a look at HII and look at this a little bit more carefully. There's a lot going on in this stock, so just uh, in this chart, so bear with me. Um, first of all, it has a very bullish power gauge rating, as you can see up in the far left corner. It's been bullish for the most part since, what is that, mid-July. And it's been outperforming the market, the S&P, since pretty much July, August. And look at the strong money flow that really kicked in in September. And you can see all else being equal, when money flow is a little bit red, it tends to go sideways. But look what happens uh, to my point as to why I would, I would uh, wait on the, that other stock that we just discussed. Um, look at this money coming in here and look at how the price shoots up. So it triggered this money flow buy signal um, as, as the chart showed. And because we were in earnings season, I dropped down the earnings component of the power gauge rating. You can see it was bullish overall, uh, but earnings surprise was, bull was bullish to very bullish. Um, and that, okay, so I'm not gonna say anything more. I'm gonna ask you to take another poll question um, and tell me what you think I did with this. Do you think I bought this or do you think I put it on my watch list? And let's see, we'll give that about 10 seconds. Okay. doke. Awesome. All right, and let's take a look. Great. Okay, this is perfect. Thank you. 75% of you said I bought it. You were right. Uh, why did I buy it? Um, well, very strong power gauge rating, strongly outperforming the market. A lot of money coming in. Oversold. See, it's dipping down below that 30. It's the perfect time to buy. And I got a money flow buy signal. And I'm coming up on earnings November 8th, which was yesterday. And this is telling me that this stock has a bullish outlook for earnings surprises. Earnings surprises drive prices because when earnings surprises are bullish and they come out, they exceed analyst estimates and typically the stock spikes up. So this is what I knew two weeks ago when I pulled the trigger and, and bought this stock. Uh, this is what I knew yesterday when they reported and you can see I bought it here on that buy signal. You can see what happened yesterday when they reported and the stock shot up uh, 8%, 8% on the day, which you can see right here. And I captured the move uh, on our one day chart. So you can, you can chart that yourself. So um, this was great. You know, I, I bought it at 231. I sold it at 251 on that spike. And it was up 9% in two weeks. So, and now it's pulled back. You know, it's, it's down 4% today. It's down to 242. So I went from 231 to 251, you know, a nice 9%. And now it's pulled back 4%. So when you get these gifts from earnings spikes, you take them. You don't hesitate. You just don't wait for tomorrow. You just take them. And you can see um, on the last uh, earnings, they did beat, but they didn't spike up that high. So this was really a nice move for this particular stock. So um, one more uh, testimonial, and this was from Cheryl, even before we had the screener of the stock discovery en engine, she was finding that Chaikin um, saved her an enormous amount of time. So I know it's saving her even more time now with those two tools. So Josh, let's flip over to you. Um, and you can show the folks how you use the screener to trade options. Sure. 
Absolutely. So I use the, the screener's a great tool. It helps me sift through the market and find the ideal candidates. It's uh, three clicks to a basket of stocks. You can see 15 of them came up uh, in my particular screen. And uh, the very first one, AEIS, had a buy signal. So we'll look at that in a second. But I look at, whoops, can you just oh, go back one second? Yeah. Too soon? I'm sorry. That's okay. I just wanted to go through and point out that Sandy and I use a lot of the same ones. And that's because we're looking for the same sort of stocks. Sandy's looking to buy the shares and I do buy and trade stocks as well. But since I'm using option, I'm also looking uh, for option candidates. So, you know, Sandy and I all are using bullish. We want things that are likely to outperform. We're both looking at money flow being strong. It's so important to have institutional investors being on the same side as you. And that's what money flow measures. If institutions are buying or selling, I don't move the market when I put in my order to buy my shares of stock. Um, I don't know if anybody else thinks they move the market when they put in their orders, but institutions are the ones that move it. And when you have good, strong money flow, like Sandy was talking about, uh, you know, it, it really helps you be on the side with the institutions as opposed to playing against the institution, which in the long run is a very losing game playing against the institutions. Finally, I add in at the very bottom here a little measure called beta. Beta is a measure of a stock's volatility. And so one of the things that I'm looking for are stocks that are a beta of one means that a stock moves with the S&P. Above one means it moves more on average than the S&P, so more volatile. Below one means less volatile than the S&P. So I'm looking for, for stocks that are slightly more volatile than the S&P, what I like to call have a little bit of bounce to them. Uh, but nothing too crazy. I don't want stocks that are going to move like three or four times the S&Ps move, uh, but a little more bounce to them. It can be really helpful in options trading. Now, uh, all right, Sandy. So now one of the things that I do is once I get this list, I'm going to apply my rules to the stocks that I'm looking at. And I'm just going to go through uh, sort of a, a checklist uh, to, to help me understand, is this the opportunity that I want to take or do I want to put it on my watch list? One of the things that I do is I use signals to help me identify the entry price. As you saw from the example I showed you uh, with LAM research, we got a nice entry point on the signal. Uh, sometimes I'll see a signal and I'll say, that is great, I want to wait a day or two, but it's a great way to help me identify when the entry price is good to go or usually pretty, pretty darn close. The next thing I do is I use the volatility bands, uh, those dotted lines that are going along the price charts. That helps me pick out where I want to go. Uh, and overbought, oversold helps me understand when the market is zigging and when it's zagging combine that with the volatility bands, it gives me a repeatable, unemotional way to understand when to exit, when to get in and when to get out. And we're going to cover those. And then I want to pick options that have good risk reward. When I'm, when I'm putting up money in a leveraged asset like options are, I want to make sure that my risk reward is, is, uh, is good. And so I went through my list. I, I generated this list. It was very easy. I went through my list. The very first one that came up was AEIS. Uh, it is a technology company. It reported good earnings recently and dropped. Uh, you'll see up here in the chart, we had this big drop and now it started to bounce a little more. It was down a bit today. But if I look straight down, what I see is money flow is really solid. Despite coming down a little bit, money flow on this big drop has stayed nice and strong. That tells me that institutions are likely buying this up, not selling it off. So if institutions are buying it or likely buying it, I want to be in it. So what I did was I clicked on our options play button, uh, came up with a couple of good ideas. The best one here is the vertical. Uh, would the cost for uh, this sort of trade would be $430. And if it makes the move that we expect it to make, and to be honest, uh, this one doesn't even need to go all the way up to the upper band. This one only needs to get back to here, back to 90. You will make uh, more than double. And that's the, that's the beauty of a leveraged asset like options. And when you have a repeatable 
process to identify good, strong stocks, because that's, that's the foundation of being a good directional options trader, is being, under, understand, being able to understand what is a likely direction in a stock. So I just go up the chart. I've got a bullish power gauge with positive relative strength that's oversold, has good money flow on a pullback, get a buy signal. Yeah, it's just kind of going through. I just check, 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 fire off the trade. Uh, so this is, this is one that I found using the screener, going through the process that both Sandy and I use to evaluate whether or not it's a good opportunity for us, pulling up the options play. And options play just put right in front of me uh, an idea with good risk reward. And um, I know it is a good probability of success because I have the Chicken Analytics platform and I've seen this setup work over and over and over and over again. So uh, does it work 100% of the time? No, but it works out quite a lot. Plenty to pay for uh, vacations. <laughs> so uh, just paid for a recent vacation to Sedona. It was fantastic. Again, awesome. uh, another, uh, just going down this list. So this is the next example I found. This is uh, CTSH. It's a software, computer software and services, more on the services side of things. Again, I went, and I looked at stocks that had good money flow. They were on a bit of a pullback uh, that was um, oversold with good, strong relative strength and power gauge rating. And these have been solid green since the middle of July. Uh, they, the stock is zigzagging above a rising trend line. It, it exhibits just about all the qualities uh, that we look for in a classic bullish stock. So next step, click the options button, see if there is a uh, good scenario that pops up. There was. For $135, you could uh, take a bullish position in this. The target they have, uh, which is just near our upper band around 78, would yield you a result of nearly two times, sorry, three times your money. That is, you would invest 135 to make 265, which is almost 200 percent. Uh, so, when you're able to have a platform that can show you over and over and over again what a high probability setup is, and the platform also can then just put right in front of you these setups through different things. We use the screener, which I showed you my screen. Sandy showed you hers. Showed you discovery tool, which is another great way to discover uh, stocks and. Um, it, it becomes just a simple, repeatable path to profits, really. So that's another uh, example there. I think I have one more that I put in, Sandy. There we go. There you go. Yep. Uh, this was on, uh, I call it CLAC, but it's KLA 10 Core Corporation. But I call it CLAC because that's just easier. It's the ticker symbol there. Uh, CLAC had not a great day today. Uh, <laughs> it was down about 4% today. Uh, sometimes things are down 4% because uh, there's not under the surface, there's not what we want to see. But that's the beauty of having confidence in the tools you're using. I have immense confidence in this. So I had no reservations about showing this to everybody tonight. We have power gauge that's bullish, relative strength that is strong, and money flow. And if we look up from when that all happened, that is when this stock started to take off again. So right now, we have a situation where we have bullish power gauge, positive relative strength, good money flow, even on the sideways move here, the sideways to down move, money flow stayed strong. The institutions are using this as an opportunity to buy. And if they are, I want to be. Again, pulled up options play. Uh, another, another one popped up. I think this one had the best score yet, although I got to say 109, 113 is, is negligible. Um, anything above 100 represents a good risk reward and odds of success. So if you're brand new to this, it's going to just tell you where are the good opportunities. Um, you know, for, I know there are people that like to do credit trading, people like to do debit trading. We do, I work with people one-on-one -on, -one on how to use this for just that, for whatever it is you have in your options game plan. I will 
help you to incorporate this to help you get higher win rate percentages uh, and use it to help you find you want to do credit spreads great this happens to be a debit spread trade it's a pretty good um, trade with good risk reward and odds of success if you only like doing credit spreads i'll work with you to show you how to do that it's very easy with this also um, the tool lends itself very well to that stuff so there's a couple of good options trades it took me a couple of clicks to do my screen and then i was able to take my screen everything that came out of that screener page that you saw i was able to then save it into a list so i have this list that i've generated and then i can just click through the stocks one by one and because i have a repeatable process um, and I know exactly what I'm looking for, I can glance at these one at a time and very quickly and easily determine where are my best opportunities, where do I want to put my money to work for me, and then go about my day. That's great, Josh. Thank you. Awesome. Sure. Uh, Ken. So uh, Ken is somebody that Joe and I have both worked with. Ken is uh, one of our subscribers. We have helped him develop his own repeatable process for trading options and Ken made a million dollars this year uh, just just shy I guess 30k shy as of July as, as of, of July. July yeah actually uh, so I'll have to check in with Ken again we speak fairly regularly he emailed in a few questions the other day and responded to them uh, he's, he's doing well he's a happy camper but what Ken did was take our platform leverage the power of Chaikin Analytics, develop some uh, easy, repeatable rules for a strategy, and he will trade um, what I call run-of-the-mill swing trades, uh, you know, boring old, boring old money-making trades, and, you know, making money is never really boring, but they're, <laughs> they're just, it's kind of rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. And he also does some, um, some earnings trades as well, leveraging, our earnings data that we have and our earning insights that we have. And Sandy showed you how she finds good earnings trades. So we have that available to you and that's what Ken's doing. Okay, we're bumping up against our time. So um, this will right. this is being recorded and it will be sent out, as Joe said, to everyone tomorrow about noontime. If you have to hop off, if you can stay on, um, that would be great, love to have you. But we'll, we'll try to go through the rest of it a little more quickly. All right, I'll pick up the pace. Um, so that wasn't that wasn't signal to you. That was for for both of us. <laughs> That's okay. I I don't need it to be a hint for me to take a hint. Um, so let's talk about classic bears. Classic bears are things that we do not want in our portfolio. These are the exact things that Sandy avoids, and that uh, in my long term portfolio I absolutely avoid. I don't want any of this in my portfolio. These are the portfolio killers. But if you're an options trader and like to play both directions, these are great. These are great uh, down bear, bear stocks, bear stocks that you can play over and over and over again. And so we basically look for the opposite. No, that's okay. We look for the opposite of what we're looking for in a bullish stock. We're looking for poor uh, money flow, bearish power gauge rating, price below a falling trend line, weak money flow, weak relative strength. We're basically looking for a stock to be a wash in red. Uh, and so one of the things that, and you can then go to the Buffett thing, one of the things that we want to avoid is risk wherever we can. And if you are developing a long only portfolio, then these are the riskiest stocks and you want to make sure that you're out of them. And if you're looking to trade uh, directionally, well then avoiding risk is understanding when to take a bearish position and when to take a bullish position and you don't want to take you don't want to buy puts in our classic bulls and you don't want to buy calls in classic bears and so this helps you avoid uh the risk of being on the wrong side of the market which is the most important thing you can avoid so here is mattel uh, you can see the yellow line down i actually played this earnings on mattel uh, again just following the patterns, you'll see we've had a number of sell signals come up repeatedly over and over again. You can see our, our sell signals here. These are yeah. relative strength yeah. sell signals, right? Right before earnings. And you'll notice that there is a consistent pattern. Not just do we have the sell signals coming up right before, but the stock just before earnings tends to get in a tight range and flat line. 
then drop on earnings. Tight range, flat line, drop on poor earnings. So what did I do? I recognized a pattern. I recognized a classically bearish stock. I saw it was flatlining. I bought a put and when it dropped, take your gift. Uh, and so this was, Mattel, this was a, a trade that we find quite often. It's not just on the bearish side, playing it on the downside. Uh, and you know, you get the down move. Now it moved back up against us the next two days. This is why when you get those earnings moves, like Sandy was talking about, uh, and, and I can't reiterate what, what Sandy was telling you early enough, when you get the move on earnings, take them. Take them then and there. Um, it's just going to be quicker and easier for you and you're not going to give then you don't have to worry about giving back these profits so that's mattel um nice classic bear here's another one TripAdvisor, and i will say mattel TripAdvisor, uh under armor chipotle which i'm going to show you next these are all things that mark has been talking about on tv in his weekly newsletters uh, these are things that mark has been highlighting for some time because for some time they have been classically bearish stocks. So here's TripAdvisor, another one. Uh, again, it exhibits a very similar pattern. We have a move up before earnings and then miss on earnings and a tank. We have a move up before earnings again, miss on earnings. Uh, this one didn't quite do it in one day, but you know, quite, quite the move down after earnings. So what did I see coming up this time? Move up on earnings. Ah, we even got a sell signal in here and then drop down. There we go. Again, get the move, take the profit. Uh, you, can, you can see here uh, options play on this. Very, very, very good. Positive scores, good risk reward. This is another good setup. And we help uh, to alert you to when earnings are. You can see at the top of the screen, there's a yellow circle. And we alert you, when are the earnings coming up? Or when did they happen? So you know they're you know in the rearview mirror, uh, and this is a great way so that you don't step in front of earnings you don't want to, or if you want to, you know exactly when to get in front of those earnings and play the patterns, repeatable, repeatable patterns. So that's uh, TripAdvisor, another classic bear. Uh, here is Chipotle, and you can see I've got this big yellow arrow pointing down right here in in June. Uh, and this is about where we have what we call a personality change. The stock had largely been above a rising trend line. Uh, the power gauge was neutral. The relative strength was positive here. And then we had what we call personality change. The relative strength flipped. The power gauge flipped. Even before that, which is what the yellow arrow is pointing out, is that money flow really started to come out before it drop before it went off a cliff there was a clue there was clues being uh told to you inside of of the money flow and uh, could have kept you away from a very bad situation if you were long or if you're interested in playing it uh from the bearish side great opportunity now that money flow continued to stay weak for quite some time here so even after the last earnings where they beat and started to rise up again if you just look down, you'll see the indicators all tell you that we're likely to continue going lower. Power gauge is red, relative strength is red, we are zigging up and preparing to zag back down. Money flow is still terrible. Everything in there would have given you the confidence to keep playing Chipotle down. Um, I was asked, how far down could Chipotle go? And I said, what's the stock price at? I said another about $272. So I don't know if they'll actually go bankrupt, but people tend to get uh, afraid of playing a stock down once it starts to move down. Chipotle used to be a $500 stock. So I, you know, I, I really encourage people when you have the proper tools to show you what are high probability setups, then you have the confidence to continue to play moves down even after they've made a big move down. So it's just a rinse repeat. And the earnings surprise um, factor in the power gauge rating um, is very, very bearish. So going into the earnings of last week, you got that, that kind of alert that, hey, you know, this is likely to disappoint. 
end. Yep. That's exactly what it did. That's right. And now it's starting to bottom out. It looks like uh, there are some bottom fishers uh, peaking in here. We'll see how that works out for them. As Mark says, bottom fishing is the most expensive sport in America. I certainly would not want to be long any stock that is very bearish in the shaky power gauge. So I would be waiting. I personally would love to see for this to zigzag up a little bit. Uh, if everything else here uh, stays poor and the relative strength, or sorry, in the money flow, I'd like to see the money flow go down a little bit. But if the stock pops up and the money flow dips down and everything else looks the way it does, it's just going to be another rinse, repeat, uh, high probability setup. So going to put it on my watch list and <laughs> watch it again. Bear. Yeah, classic, classic bear. bear. Yep. Uh, and here's another one, Under Armour. Um, Under Armour, another classic bear, uh, absolutely disaster of a stock. Uh, you can see the power gauge and the relative strength had been read the last 12 months, the entire year. And what has the stock done the entire year? Nothing but make lower highs and lower lows. And that is very typical of a stock like this that has poor power gauge that has poor relative strength um we even had a couple of sell signals you can see come up before the last earnings they beat and still dropped it's a bearish stock the fundamentals are bad so even when they beat earnings it doesn't necessarily mean that the stock is going to turn around uh the last earnings uh, that they beat and went up was back here in april and even that got sold off uh, so this is another classically bearish stock. I looked at the options play on this. You can see that the price dropped and has been starting to kind of find a little bit of, uh, I don't know if I want to say support, but steadying. And in that steadying, we see that the money flow is about as poor as it gets. Uh, it doesn't look like it goes much lower than that. So this, this drop, although it's steadying, looks like it's having money still, still being taken out of it. Uh, so, you know, another, listen, a move from 12 to 10 is only $2, but it's 20%. And if you wanted to play that sort of continued weakness going out toward the end of the year in this stock, you can do it for uh, just 70 bucks uh, to make about one and a half times your money. So again, another classic bear setup. It's just the inverse of the classic bulls. Um, simple, repeatable process. We look for poor, power, very, very bearish power gauge rating, poor relative strength. Uh, that means that it's underperforming the market. I don't think people pay attention to that enough, whether or not something is underperforming or outperforming the market. The market is an average. So if you're buying, when Sandy showed you bulls, you don't want to be in below average stocks. Uh, and when you're selling, you don't want them to be above average. You don't want to be outperforming the market. These are things that you want to go down. So you want to be in things that are below average. Again, it's a, it's a classic setup, classic bear. Look at the money recently coming out uh, of it. Yeah, pouring out, I would pouring say. Pouring out, yeah. Pouring out. Pouring out. Okay. Torsten. Torsten. And Torsten, so what Torsten's doing is the strategies that you see on that options play window. On that options play window, the strategies that you see there are the exact strategies that Torsten is using uh, that I've talked to him about. And this is, uh, this is, these are the type of returns you can get by using options. And when you have uh, the odds in your favor, then you can expect consistent returns as well. So, um, okay. yeah. So just quickly to review my rules, I'm using signals to help me identify my entry prices. I'm using the volatility bands to help me pick my target so I know when to get out, right? Uh, and overbought, oversold indicators help us understand that white cough pattern. When is it zigging? When is it zagging? When are we getting short-term highs and lows? If you're going to be a shorter-term option trader, you want to trade over a month or two, you need to have a good, reliable way to understand when is it going to be a little bit higher in the month and when is it going to be a little bit lower? And the overbought, oversold is a very reliable indicator to help you do that. Uh, so then we just look for options with good risk reward. And when it all lines up, we check everything off the, on the checklist. And we pull the trigger. We take the <laughs> trade. That's it. Okay. So uh, this is my bearish screen. It is just the inverse of my bullish one. 
I just took everything and flipped it on its head. It's the other side of the coin. So instead of bullish power gauge rating, we're looking for bearish. Instead of positive strong money flow, we're looking for weak money flow. Uh, instead of strong relative strength, we're looking for poor relative strength. You know, we just kind of flipped all these things around. We want it to be in a weak industry, not a strong industry now. So we just kind of flipped everything around. I ran this today, uh, came up with a couple of interesting ideas. Uh, the one that tended to stand out to me the most today on it was, I believe, Apache. Yeah, I just want to point something out here. You go from almost a universe of 2,000 up here, stock universe of almost 2,000, down to 11 stocks. Uh, in a time frame of about 30 seconds. So it's, yeah. it's a pretty cool tool. Oh, it's so powerful. It, exactly. It, that's exactly right. I got 11 stocks that are going to be very close to exhibiting what I'm looking for ideally. They're going to be really, really close to it already. So I'm already right on the – I'm not just in the neighborhood. I'm within the, a block. I'm within a house or two of the, of the ones that I want to look at. Uh, and the very first one that popped up was Apache. Uh, this is a stock that has been below a falling trend line for some time. You can see all the relative strength sell signals here that helped me identify previous trades. Uh, and right now, on uh, they beat on earnings. They rose, but they rose on negative money flow. All right, so if we just look at this rise in price and we look straight down on that rise in price, we see that this is not a move that's getting bought by the institutions. And if we look down at the bottom, we see that the relative strength is still poor and the power gauge, a quick blip of yellow, but generally speaking, has been all red. Uh, and we're back to red. And so I thought, well, this is an interesting idea. Let's take a look. Uh, options play, pulled up options play, score of one of 128 for $179. You could take a... Uh, calculated shot this would mean for you to get the reward down here this stock would have to get to 40 by expiration within the bands which is absolutely reasonable we're not showing you things that are shoot for the moon ideas this is the, look this thing's been all over the bands what the, the the odds that it's going to stay within the bands and fall back down to there i think are pretty good and so um I actually I took a couple of trades on this. Great. Yeah. Cool. I like it. Let me oh. get all my lines out of the way. I'm sorry. One more. One more testimonial from a from from Norm. All right. So uh, oh, Norm's another millionaire. Um, Norm Norm and uh, Ken Hep should hang out. So using using our system. Um, he now has a portfolio in excess of a million dollars. Really, it's what he says below that, though, uh, is that he would make money and then lose it, make it and lose it. He was just not consistent. And we get that a lot. Uh, people who are out there in the wilderness without reliable indicators and a, a reliable, repeatable approach. Uh, and they come to us and you know, we, we show them how you can do this with a repeatable re approach. Repeatable means consistent. Consistent means that you're going to have confidence in it. When you get consistent returns, you get confidence. When you get confidence, you stay consistent, and it's just a virtuous circle. And you get profitable. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's great, Josh. Okay, last but not least is knowing when to buy and sell. And I know we are really running over time here, um, but – Maybe, Joe, you could just put up a poll and see if they want me to go through this next section, which is going to be about five or ten minutes, uh, when to buy and sell. I know I've been pointing um, these stocks out and showing when I do buy and sell along the way, but I kind of wrap it all up in one. So I'm happy to stay on if, um, if you all can stay with me. All right, and let's go ahead and take a look. I think it's an overwhelming yes. Okay, great. Oh, oh my word. Wow, I love you guys. Thank you. Okay, uh, those of you that can't stay, um, you know, feel free to hop off, and we will send you the recording tomorrow. So uh, we've been pointing out these signals, these little red and green triangles. As we've said, we have six pairs. 
We've also been pointing out the overbought, oversold indicator. Both of these things are very helpful with timing. So how do you know when those signals trigger? Um, what I do is I keep two lists. One is my, wa my watch list, which are stocks that I'm watching. Uh, they're candidates, the things I get from the screener, from the discovery engine. I put them in my watch list. I scroll through the bullish and very bullish ones every morning. And I do the same with my stock list. I only own, own typically eight to 10 stocks at any given time. And I flip through each chart of those every morning as well. But what I do when I come into my workstation is I click on this little bell here. You see it where it says eight. And I can click on this bell on literally any list. I could do this on the S&P 500. I could do this on an ETF or an uh, industry group, whatever list. And we are a system of lists. Um, I could overlay the alerts view on. And this will give me the signals. You can see the buy signals here that were triggered back in September. Uh, when I ran this screen. It'll also tell me other things that may affect the price of a stock, like a power gauge rating turning bullish, as it did for LDL, or an analyst uh, changing an estimate revision. I mean, these are all things that I want to know about, but I don't want to go looking for them. So this way, they're literally kind of served up to me in this alerts view. So let's look at this example back from September when I did a presentation. And I got a relative strength buy signal on BZH. So here's BZH. This is the yellow arrow is that buy signal. And look what happened. I mean, everything was lined up, right? And looking at this chart, I did buy this stock. I bought it in here at around 16. I didn't buy it right at the low there. And it just has gone up, up, and up. So it's reporting November 14th. I can look back and say, do I want to hold this through earnings? Well, yeah, look what's happened. The last two quarters, they've beaten, they've spiked way up. And unlike HII, they've gone, or broker, they've continued to go up, um, you know, for a week or 10 days running the last two quarters. Prior to that, they disappointed. But, you know, if you look at the setup here, everything being green, a lot of money coming in, a buy signal, you know, that was my opportunity, and I'm going to be watching it, obviously, on the 14th and seeing how it performs on the earnings report. So here's another watch list uh, with the alert overlay that I did two weeks ago. That's when I found HII, and I know we've already gone through that, but just to capture it again, um, I did buy on that, on that buy signal, which was back here, and I sold it two weeks later when it spiked up. And just the way Josh has rules, I have rules. So my rule for selling is take advantage of those earning spikes, or if it hits above this upper volatility band, I'm a seller, so I think of this as like a channel that you've got to stay in. It's kind of the normal price of the stock range. Um, and if it goes outside it, it's unlikely it's gonna stay up there. Uh, sometimes they do like lamb research, but typically they pull back. Um, so that's another one of my rules. So I applied both of those rules basically yesterday uh, when I sold uh, HII on that spike. And in two weeks, as I as I mentioned earlier, I did make you know an eight percent gain. Um, let's look at the alerts view on my watch list today. Uh, here, there's a WD, LDL, RGA, um, is an insurance stock, has triggered a momentum breakout. So this is the RGA stock chart right here. Um, and again, you can flip, you can click right from this signal here and you'll get the chart. So this looks pretty good, right, guys? I mean, you're now experts at looking at these charts. Look at all these buy signals. Uh, this is the momentum buy uh, that just triggered here, but look what the, has been going on for the last um, month or so. A lot of buy s signals triggering, and and look at what happened once it, everything lined up mid-September. Everything turns to green, and the price starts going up, and it's now bumping up on that upper volatility band. Would I buy this stock now? Um, no, it's at the upper 
volatility band. That's where I like to sell, not buy. Uh, it's overbought. It's not dipping down. And they just reported. They're not reporting again until January. So this is not the right time to buy this stock, although it looks very healthy. I'll put it on my watch list and see if there's a better time. So just because there is a buy signal doesn't mean that's the absolute perfect time. It doesn't know, a momentum breakout buy doesn't know that it's overbought. <laughs> it doesn't know that it's not zigging down. Um, it just knows there's a lot of momentum moving, a lot of money moving into the stock. So that's how I use those sell rules to um, take the profit. And the other scenario of when to sell is when you sense a stock is breaking down. Um, and the, the, the kind of criteria I have, um, well, here's my criteria for taking the profit. Um, as I just recapped, it hits the upper volatility band, the price is overbought, that means it's zigzagging up, not down, or it spikes after the strong earnings report as it did in those examples with Bruker and HII and actually DHI earlier, which I sold today on an earnings spike. So I use, I use these rules all the time, uh, particularly since we're now in the, in the midst of, of earnings season. Uh, so here's another um, example of selling on the spike. A number of those rules were met. Um, the stock went outside that upper volatility band and look what it did uh, last week. It spiked way up on earnings. And then shortly after that, look what's happened. I mean, this is the confirmation that it's good to follow these rules because the stock has since pulled back, as you can see. And I knew that it would looking at previous earnings. Look, you know, it spiked up, and but pulled back immediately. Spiked up, pulled back immediately. So when it spiked up, I immediately took the profit because I didn't think it was going to last, and, and it didn't last. It pulled back immediately, and money started coming out of this stock. So this is definitely a stock I would be out of today if I had not sold it already. That is a real tell if money flows turns negative and you're hitting your upper volatility band. It's really time to leave the party. Uh, Huntington Ingalls. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to skip through this because I know we've talked about this in other contexts, but again, you know, selling it on that earnings beat. Okay, the other scenario of when to sell is when you sense that the stock is breaking down. And how do you know that? Well, my rules are the power gauge turns neutral, and then another indicator like money flow or relative strength turns negative. Certainly if I get a sell signal. And if the price drops below that long-term trend line, that dotted line, you know, the vo lower volatility band. Now, I typically am out of stocks before they get to that point. Um, this, this looks like there's a lot going on. It's not as, not as busy as it looks. I'm going <laughs> to spell it all out for you. But this is a stock that I bought back in uh, December, almost a year ago, and bought it again on the SPY signal. I sold it up here when it hit the upper volatility band. Again, that's my rule, right? I took the profit. I took an 18% profit, profit. And I did that because even though power gauge and relative strength were strong, just this little teeny tip to, uh, of money flow turning red gave me the sense that, boy, this is now up on that upper volatility band. It's hitting an all-time high. Uh, I think I'll just take my profit and uh, say goodbye, which is exactly what I did. And unbeknownst to me, they pre-reported um, two days later, which is really weird. And it was a terrible uh, guidance, and the stock dropped uh, over 10%. And then when they reported it again two weeks later, it dropped again. And now you can see what's happening. Power gauge turned neutral. Relative strength turned negative. Money flow turned negative. And it's been down ever since. So this stock is now at 650. I mean, how would you like to be holding the stock at 650 when you bought it at $16 and you could have sold it at 19? Um, it's down 65% from when I sold it. So, I mean, these rules really do come into play. The buy and hold 
mentality doesn't really work anymore with big institutional buying moving these prices the way it does. You've really got to follow the money and, and be on top of it. And that's another reason I only keep eight or 10 stocks at any given time because I've got like 15 minutes a day to spend on this, literally. I flip through those charts of stocks I own in the morning and stocks I'm watching in the morning. And then in the afternoon after the close, I flip through them again. And having that manageable amount can really help. But this stock reported earnings today. This is a stock uh, chart from today and it dropped 23% today down to 650. So this is on oxygen. Uh, oddly enough, the power gauge has turned uh, bullish, but when you see negative relative strength and negative uh, money flow, you know, avoid. So I think that really wraps up uh, the selling, uh, the selling um, criteria. I do have these rules on my website, sandychaken.com. You can go to it and um, enter your email address and you'll be able to download the, uh, the workbook that outlines these sell signals, including the, you know, the five steps to how to find winning stocks. So I invite you to, to do that um, if you want to have these, you know, at hand to, to reference. So uh, another a recent testimonial from Kat, she said she's, she did renew her subscription and she said uh, she's now knocking on the door of a salary for a neurosurgeon. And she knows that because she's got a friend who's a neurosurgeon. So I think that's pretty funny. So let's just recap the steps that uh, Josh and I took you through today was uh, tools you could trust. You got to have reliable tools to start with. You need to know where a stock is headed, whether you're investing uh, as a swing trader or options trader. When to buy and sell, you know, knowing, knowing when to buy and sell is, is critical. And that you all said was your biggest challenge. And then as Josh showed us how to create these high probability option strategies so you can layer on the profits. So we made a promise in the beginning that you would discover how to create high probability option strategies by predicting where a stock is headed. So we hope we've delivered on that promise. And all this is so that you can make more money in the stock market, put some of that money into your retirement account, but also take some of that money and enjoy life while we've got it. John Malden is another partner of ours um, who uses Chaken. And I know there's a lot of uh, his followers on the webinar right now, but he uses it as does his uh, stock research team and they've integrated the power gauge rating into their routine due diligence for vetting and evaluating potential investments. So it's not us just, that are just using us, the, the institutions and the, um, you know, our peers in the industry. So this is all thanks to um, Chaken Analytics. Uh, which is a proven and reliable stock selection system. Uh, again, our discovery engine and stock selection methods won us the FinTech Award for Best Stock Ideas in 2017, which is pretty cool. A number of free bonuses come on that platform, the screener, which we showed you, the options play that's built in. None of these are extra add-ons. They're all bundled into the subscription price. Obviously the 20 factor model, the stock discovery engine that we talked about. And this all is usually $2,195 a year. For a, a webinar special though, we're gonna take $300 off to $1,895. And if you'll stay with me, I'm gonna even sweeten the pot a little bit further. In addition, you get more free bonuses. This is the one day view that I showed you, which you know is so useful when you're selling a stock like I did today on DHI, and I could pinpoint exactly when to set, when to pull that trigger. I never had to leave the chart. Um, the earnings overlays, which we referred to, uh, which are really helpful, particularly now in earnings season to anticipate when a stock is gonna spike and when it's gonna drop. And the market insights, um, and that is the weekly uh, co uh, market commentary Mark puts out with specific stock ideas. And a number of those have been um, included in stocks that, that I own. Um, now I, 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 whoops, I 
highlight this because I think this is really um, one of the best things we do. And that is that we offered Josh and Joe to you as our subscribers uh, unlimited time. They will get you, when, when you subscribe by midnight tonight, you'll not only get put into a small group tutorial tomorrow, but you also have access to both of them for unlimited coaching and support one-on-one -on -one or in these small groups, you know, however you want it. As, as Josh said, he does set up specific times one-on-one -on -one with options traders to show them how to use options play with the strategies that they utilize. So I think that's really a great service. And as you can see, they're both really dedicated and professional and knowledgeable. So I told you I would sweeten the pot for a little bit more. We're going to take an extra $100 off when you subscribe by midnight tonight. And you'll get all of that um, bundled into your annual subscription and be into the system as early as tomorrow on this, uh, what we call an onboarding call to get you set up, get you uh, knowledgeable how to build your watch list, how to read those signals, how to overlay that alerts view so you know when the signals are triggering and basically to give you a, a thorough work walk walk through of the platform so you can be up and running quickly. So, um, Josh, anything you want to say on um, in closing, other than you know, thank you to all these great people who stayed with us for the full time frame. I really appreciate that. No, I just want to thank everybody for their time tonight. I hope it was valuable for you. I, uh, I'd encourage everybody to subscribe. I think that deal that Sandy is offering you is a steal. You could have access to the platform. You can be on an onboard, as she said, tomorrow walking you through it. And we could be having a chat one-on-one -on -one about how to um, integrate some rules and shake in right into what you're doing you know, next week. So uh, take advantage of it. Thank you all for your time. Sandy, it's always a pleasure uh, working with you on this. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, enjoy doing this. So Joe, I'll turn it back to you to, to close out the session. Thank you so much. All right, everyone. Well, as you see on the page here, uh, Chaken Analytics, uh, Sandy's discount here is for seventeen ninety five for a full year to Chaken Analytics. Uh, we're going to be sticking around a little bit later on tonight, so you're welcome to give us a call at 877-697-6783. You can also send us an email at sales at ChakenAnalytics.com or, of course, go right to our website, um, ChakenAnalytics.com forward slash Sandy. You'll see this uh, discount code automatically be applied, so feel free to check that out. Um, but uh, again, we want to thank you for joining us. Keep an eye out for the uh, webinar recording tomorrow. Uh, but until then, have a great day, and uh, we'll see you on our onboard session tomorrow.